Good afternoon. My name is Nathaniel George, and it is a pleasure to be here with you today. As an individual passionate about social activism, I've often found myself wondering, what is the best way to create effective change? In October of 2022, I started the Cactus Flower Initiative for Youth Entrepreneurship to address an inconsistency I saw across Phoenix, that there was a lack of accessible resources and programming for youth entrepreneurs. Throughout this past year, my work in advocating for youth entrepreneurs and leaders has allowed me to meet with corporate, political, nonprofit, and educational leaders in order to engage in conversations on how to best inspire young people to take the lead. Through these conversations, I have been able to realize the importance of efficacy and longevity in the change-making process in order to ensure that the path to progress is both inviting and empowering for young people to participate. It is my utmost honor to speak with you here today on this very subject of creating sustainable and impactful change. Now, I would like to start off by asking everyone a simple question. Raise your hand if you like cereal. It could be Cocoa Puffs, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, or even Fruit Loops, but if you enjoy cereal, raise your hand. Great, well, I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine named Carl. Like those of you who raised your hand, Carl also enjoys cereal. He was first introduced to it through his parents, who were avid cereal lovers themselves. As a result, they always made sure to have the house fully stocked with cereal. And in fact, there was never a day that went by that Carl didn't have access to cereal readily accessible to him. Now recently, Carl learned of Cereal Less, a small rural town which lacks access to cereal and has frankly never experienced it. Being a self-proclaimed cereal aficionado after majoring in cereology in college, Carl decided to take it upon himself to bring the great news of cereal to the town of Cereals. Now, in comes my friend, Jessica. Jessica was raised in the town of Cerealis, and she didn't have her first bowl of cereal until she went off to college. There, she also majored in cereology, where she learned about the history of cereal and ways to address the unique lack of cereal access in her hometown of Cerealis. Now, Jessica and Carl are both united in their passion for cereal and their commitment to helping the town of Cerealis. But the question remains, who should be the one to lead the effort of helping Cerealis? In today's society, privilege is a stark reality that affects the dynamics of power and opportunity. As renowned author and activist Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie remarks, privilege is when you think something is not a problem because it is not a problem for you personally. Privilege can often blind individuals to the systemic inequalities that continue to persist, largely due to their lack of lived experiences with those same issues. This, there's, there's often a disconnect that exists between those who want to affect change and the actual realities of disadvantaged communities. In fact, interacting with these disadvantaged communities react, requires more than just empathy or good intentions. It requires authenticity, humility, and the willingness to learn from the perspectives of those directly involved. Bridging this gap between effective engagement and privilege requires constant recognition of the complex interplay between systemic inequalities and individual experiences. A lack of such awareness can cause even the most well-intentioned interventions to promote harmful stereotypes and overlook community-specific issues. One such example of a nuanced crisis is that of anthropogenic climate change. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency maintains that the socially vulnerable, such as low-income communities of color, are the most susceptible to the adverse effects of climate change. This is due to multiple limiting factors, including location of living, existing medical conditions, poorly maintained or aging infrastructure, improper access to resources and care, limited financial resources, as well as cultural, language, and citizenship barriers. A high-income citizen voting on this issue of climate change might be completely ignorant of the effect that their voting stance could have on the countless other individuals who lack the same access and agency. And with numerous climate change magnifying groups accelerating their legislative influence over our elected officials, a lack of, aware of awareness is simply not enough to justify the continued climate oppression of marginalized communities, as well as the support of industries like the oil industry, which profited around $219 billion 2020. In her research paper entitled, 
the identity of activism, how gender and racial identity relate to activism. Georgetown University student Michelle Gall examined the impact of race and gender in determining political involvement. By utilizing correlation and regression analyses, as well as an independent t-test, Ball found that private regard and perceived discrimination are positively associated with activism, and that racial identity and experiences of discrimination are also important determinants of activism. In the United States, which is marked by extreme divides of wealth, there has been a recent trend in performance activism, activism fueled solely by self-promotion and often benefits those individuals involved in some level. With the aforementioned research exemplifying how personal topics such as race and gender can impact political activism, marginalized groups may become distraught to find that their political and social spaces have become overrun by those who lack the knowledge or the proper understanding on the issues relevant to their communities. This rise in performance and approval-based activism represents the need for widespread sustainable change by communities for communities. Now, what does implementation of this idea look like? How do we create a society where Carl can learn from Jessica's lived experiences and assist her efforts to implement sustainable change in the town of Serialis? It is important to begin by investing in the youth in disadvantaged communities. This is incredibly important since youth play a pivotal role in the change-making process serving as the next generation of leaders. Furthermore, research shows that investing in youth-led activism in marginalized communities has the potential to encourage and inspire future generations of leaders, as well as to ensure that economic and social development in those communities is sustainable. Finally, it is often said that diversity is our greatest strength, but this phrase will only ring true when individuals from diverse backgrounds are valued respected, and given the space to share their stories. Amplifying these marginalized voices by allowing them a seat at the change-making table is an important first step. This crucial element of visibility allows for the building of radical empathy, which can bridge our gaps in understanding and allow us to broaden our world. Furthermore, it creates citizens who are determined and resolved to create change, even when those causes might stray from their own lived experiences. As we journey onward toward a brighter future, let us promote activism based in compassion, fueled solely by the doctrine of creating a more equitable world for everyone. Thank you.